Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and to the conferring ceremonies this evening. Before declaring the conferring ceremonies opening, I'd like to introduce the platform party, but before that, I would invite you to have a seat. S seated at the, at the center table uh, is Professor Mary Horgan, who's president of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, and Mr. Kenneth Mealy, president of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And uh, from your right, as you look to the stage, Professor Ronan O'Connell, vice president, RCSI, Ms. Anya Gibbons, director of development, alumni relations, fellows and members, RCSI, Mr. Kieran Ryan, managing director of surgical affairs, RCSI, Ms. Judith Gilroy, Associate Director of Academic Affairs, RCSI. Ms. Mr. Cliff Byrne, Dean of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, RCPI and RCSI. Dr. Theresa Frawley, Dean of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery, RCSI. Mr. John Marley, Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, RCSI. Mr. Niall Sheedy, Dean of the Faculty of Radiologists, RCSI. Mr. Philip Carlin, Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, RCPI and RCSI. Dr. Patricia Minnick, Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery, RCSI. Dr. Edward Cotter, Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Dentistry, RCSI. Dr. Patricia Cunningham, Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Radiologists, RCSI. Mr. David Moore, Chairman of the Irish Surgical Postgraduate Training Committee and Council Member, RCSI. And my name is Eunan Friel and I'm the Managing Director of Healthcare Management at RCSI. President, Vice President, Minister, Members of Council, Deans of Faculties, Past Presidents, Members of Faculty Boards, Fellows of the College and Faculties, we will commence the proceedings this evening with the award of honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And today we are delighted to welcome two recipients for the honorary fellowship award. Dr. Frank MacDonald, author, journalist, former uh, environmental editor of the Irish Times. Dr. Valerie Roosh, president of American College of Surgeons, attending surgeon and member, minor family chair of Rinterthoracic Cancers, vice chair of clinical research, Department of Surgery, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and Professor of Surgery, Will Cornell Medical College. And the President, Dr. Kenneth Mealy, will confer the honorary fellows to the candidates. I'd now like to invite Professor Thomas Lynch, Council Member or CSA, to come forward with Mr. Frank McDonald and read the citation for Mr. McDonald. President, Vice President, past presidents, members of council, faculty board members, academic staff, fellows and members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Frank MacDonald, journalist and environmental campaigner. <clears throat> Frank was born in Dublin in 1950 and educated at St. Vincent's CBS in Glasnevin and University College Dublin, where he graduated in 1971 with a BA in History and Politics. He told me that it was by accident rather than by design that he drifted into journalism. Frank was involved in student politics and was a junior reporter on a college paper at the age of 18 years. While in college, along with a few other students, he started a publication simply called Student. This sold so well that the editorial staff were able to treat themselves to dinners at various restaurants around Dublin. After graduating from UCD, he went to New York, and from there, he wrote Looking for Work with the three main Irish daily papers. The Irish press offered him a post as a freelance New York correspondent at the age of 22. After two years, he came back to Dublin to work full-time with the same paper as a sub-editor. At the age of 29, after a competitive interview, he was appointed to the staff of the Irish Times. 
This was the start of a 36-year career with the newspaper. He became its environmental correspondent in 1986 and was its editor from 2000 until he officially retired in 2015. He has authored and co-authored several books on development and planning and planning in Dublin. In 1985, when he was in his mid-30s, he wrote The Destruction of Dublin, telling how the city was being destroyed by architects, road engineers, planners, bureaucrats, developers, and so on. As he says himself, he was an angry young man, and those who read the book were equally enraged by its revelations. The book made a significant impact and changed the way many people looked at Dublin. His latest book, Truly Frank, a Dublin memoir, published last year, recounts his life story. Frank also wrote extensively about climate change and in 1982 was at the first Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. In 1995, the United Nations began holding an annual climate summit and the then little known Angela Merkel chaired the very first one in Berlin when she was environment minister. At that time, the discussion was about the climate being a problem for future generations. However, Frank wrote about it being a problem for our generation and how right he was. The world now recognizes the scale of the climate emergency. Climate change is really too neutral a term to use. Frank was at pains to tell people about this and is to be credited as one of the first people to embed it in the Irish psyche. The 2015 Climate Summit in Paris was a major turning point, but this exciting direction was undermined by, by President Donald Trump declaring that the US would no longer be part of the agreement. Despite the president's rejection of the Paris summit, Frank credits many US cities and states with taking action to deal with the emergency. He's a regular contributor to radio and television programs. Frank is also honored with several awards for his work, including an honorary membership of the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland, an honorary fellowship of the Royal Institute of British Architects. We would like to welcome Frank here today. He is joined by his partner of 43 years, Eamon Slater, his sister, Idel, and her husband, Paul, his brothers, Dennis and Liam. His niece, Jane, is here and notably was recently conferred from Trinity with a PhD in climate studies, thus carrying on the family tradition. Frank's mum lived to 89 years of age and his dad died last year at the great age of 101, after having collected the cheque, of course. So hopefully we'll enjoy his contributions to the environment and Irish society for many years. Frank MacDonald is a lifelong journalist who has written extensively on environmental issues and always had a mission to find out what was going on and to tell people about it. And he was not afraid of the consequences of putting this information in the public domain. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Frank MacDonald who, I am sure you will all agree, is worthy of the highest distinction this college has to offer, the Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I now invite Ms. MacDonald to recite the Fellows Declaration. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I, Frank MacDonald, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I will do to the utmost of my power endeavor and endeavor to promote to the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office of president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Thank you. I would now like to invite Professor Laura Veriani, Council Member, or CSI, to come forward with Dr. Valerie Roosh to read the citation for Dr. Roosh. Good 
Good afternoon, Mr. President, past presidents, members of council, faculty board members, academic staff, fellows, members, families, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege to read the citation for Dr. Valerie Rush on the occasion of her honorary fellowship, which is the highest honor this college can award. Dr. Valerie Rush is one of the world's leading experts in the surgical management of lung cancer and mesothelioma. She's one of the first women in the US to be board certified in thoracic surgery and has been recently elected to serve as the 100th president of the American College of Surgeons. Her father was a physician in the US Navy during World War II and later practiced as an otolaryngologist in New York. Her mother was a feminist and progressive social activist long before it became politically correct, according to Dr. Roosh. Her father's family is Swiss. She's a descendant of Albrecht van Haller, who's often referred to as the father of modern physiology. A native New Yorker, she graduated from the Lycée Francais of New York and then Vassar College with a degree in biochemistry. She received her medical degree from the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Columbia University. Her interest in surgery was sparked by summer jobs as a surgical scrub tech during college. She completed residency training in general surgery at the University of Washington in Seattle. While there, her mentors persuaded her to consider th thoracic surgery as a specialty. She received addi additional training in thoracic oncology at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, before joining the faculty at the University of Washington. She's currently the professor of surgery at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York. She's, a, she's attending surgeon in the thoracic service at the Department of Surgery at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, where she's been since 1989. She's vice chair for clinical research in the Department of Surgery and the minor family chair in interthoracic cancers. Dr. Rouge specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of patients with cancers of the lung, airways, esophagus, mediastinum, chest wall, and pleura, and she's a pioneer of mesothelioma surgery. During her more than 30 years in clinical practice, Dr. Rouge has emphasized a multidisciplinary approach to treating patients with thoracic malignancy, and she's actually been a leader in practice-changing trials. Her research has focused on the molecular behavior of asbestos cancers, and the genetic tendencies of lung cancer in order to identify certain cancers in their earlier stages. She's been a fellow of the American College of Surgeons since 1986 and is the 218 recipient of the ACS Distinguished Service Award. That's the highest honor that college can award. She's led several prominent AC bodies, including serving as chair of the Board of Governors and Board of Regents. And she's held many prominent leader positions in other specialty organizations. She became a driving force behind the revision and validation of staging systems and international guidelines for mesothelioma. She's also taken a leading role in the elaboration of the end component of the TNM lung cancer classification. She's played a pivotal role in establishing the ACS Oncology Group, now the ACS Clinical Research Program. A colleague has said of her, Dr. Rouge reminds us that we're not just doctors, but we also need to be scientists. She has surely just done that pushing back the boundaries, treating disease that used to be untreatable, and provide both prolonged life and improved quality of life for so many of her patients. She's co-authored more than 400 peer-reviewed articles, has held 25 visiting professorships, and has given more than 300 major lectures. She's also received many honors, one of them the Earl Batten Scientific Achievement Award in 2019. Her awards reflect her outstanding scientific contributions that have enhanced the practice of cardiothoracic surgery and patients' quality of life. In her role as chief at MSK, she's put teaching at the very center of the departmental activities. She clearly regards teaching as a very important part of a surgeon's role. Professor David Healy, a fellow council member who's here today, can testify to this, as he has had the great privilege to work as a fellow with her at MSK. So this lady is not only a master in her field scientifically, but she's renowned for many accomplishments and contributions to surgery, teaching, and research. Her natural leadership, integrity, vision, and steadfast commitment to her college's initiatives and principles has served as a role model to surgeons everywhere to always do the right thing for patients. She's very much endeavored to live the scholar role, and she has truly succeeded. So I'm sure, Mr. President, that you would agree that Dr. Valerie Rouge is a very worthy recipient of an honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons here in Ireland. I, Valerie Roosh, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient 
to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office of president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Thank you. We will now proceed to the conferring of fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons excuse me, in Ireland, and I invite Mr. David Moore, Chair of the ISPTC and Council Member, to introduce the candidates for fellowship and membership of the Royal College of Surgeons. I now invite the candidates for the Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, including JS, CFE, and Adeundum candidates, to rise and recite the declaration in unison with me. The declaration is listed on page eight of your booklet. I state your name. Do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour, and dignity of the said college. I promise to place the welfare of my patients above all else. I promise to be respectful of my fellow healthcare professionals and will readily offer them my assistance and support. I further promise to continue to learn and teach and maintain my competence for the benefit of my patients, trainees, and the society in which I serve. I now call on the President to admit you fellows of the college. By virtue of my office of President, I admit you fellows of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will call on the candidates to come forward and receive your parchment from the presidents, uh, commencing with candidates for fellowship of RCSI JSCFE in trauma and orthopedic surgery. El Sadig El Hadi El Sadig Mahmoud. I now call forward candidates for fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland in general surgery, Mohammed Akif. <laughs> Zishan Ahmed. <laughs> Atakalet Asifa Farede. Anna Heedy. <laughs> Helen Mohan. <laughs> Hamid Mustafa. Donald Peter O'Leary. <laughs> Aileen Constance Rogers. <laughs> M 
Muhammad Shahil Sahabali. I now call forward ca the candidate for fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland in oral and, uh, and maxillofacial surgery, Connor Michael Bow. And in pediatric surgery, David Coyle. And candidates for the Fellowship of RCSI in Plastic Surgery, Eamon Francis. <laughs> Kenneth Joyce. Adrian McArdle. and the candidate for fellowship of RCSI in trauma and orthopedic surgery, Samir Safwat Kamil Hakim. I now invite the candidates for membership of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, including ENT and ophthalmology to rise and recite the declaration in unison with me. The declaration is on page eight of your booklet. I state your name, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and that I will to the utmost of my power endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. I promise to place the welfare of my patients above all else. I promise to be respectful of my fellow healthcare professionals and will readily offer them my assistance and support. I further promise to continue to learn and teach and maintain my competence for the benefit of my patients, trainees, and the society in which I serve. I now call on the president to admit you members of the college. By virtue of my office of president, I admit you members of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the president. Hassan Abbas. Youssef Abdalazim Abdalaziz Abdalazim in Abstentia. Amir Soheb Ahmad. Kamran Amin. Thomas Matthews Calvert. James Clark. Jamie Clements. Mel Corbett. Christina Croitoru. Shane Cullen. Kieran Doherty.
Connor Thomas Dooley. Rachel Enright. <laughs> Hannah Hughes. <laughs> Kieran Martin Hurley. Mohammed Hitesham, <laughs> Mohammed Shazil Jamal, <laughs> Zara Kennedy. <laughs> Shane Kyo. Alan Martin Keyes. <laughs> Sadaf Khalid. <laughs> Daniel Zaman Khan. <laughs> Niall Khan. Rahil Nassim Khan. <laughs> Paul Keelty. <laughs> Kailash Kumar. Aaron Lowe. <laughs> Mohammed Kaish Lukman. <laughs> Amr Obeid Mahmoud. Paul McCarroll. <laughs> Ivan Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> Elizabeth Mary Marlisa O'Dwyer. Niall O'Dwyer. <laughs> Megan Power Foley. <laughs> Hamoud Ur Rechman. Paul Joseph Ryan. <laughs> Marion Valentine Seselenau. <laughs> Ian Stevens. Arvin Tirushelvam. <laughs> and candidates for the MRCS in ENT, Keelan McLaughlin. <laughs> Claudine Alicia Murphy. Grace O'Flanagan. <laughs> Rory O'Neill. <laughs> 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 
And finally, candidates for the MRCS in ophthalmology, Brendan Kyle Cummings. <laughs> Emer Doolan. <laughs> Patrick Murta. I would now like to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Radiologists, Dr. Niall Sheehy, and the Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Radiologists, Dr. Patricia Cunningham, to introduce the candidates for fellowship of the faculty, <coughs> including Addy Undham. I will now introduce the candidates for fellowship of the Faculty of Radiologists. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page 8 of your booklet in unison as follows. I, state your name, do hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Dean and in presence of the President, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Radiologists, Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. Firstly, radio diagnosis, Maria Louise Bambrick. Claire Crowley. John Alfred Dignan. Mary Louise Gargan. <laughs> Roisin Mary Heaney. <laughs> Aidan Joseph Hegarty. Jennifer Hennebury. <laughs> Dara Bernard Hurley. <laughs> Alvin Marie McDermott. Alexandra Murphy. <laughs> Laura Catherine Murphy. <laughs> Keelan Lee Latham. Cormac Owen O'Brien. <laughs> Amy Claire O'Brien. <laughs> Owen O'Malley.
Mark Sheehan. Andrea Elena Stroescu. In Radiation Oncology, Orla Houlihan. Lorna Keenan. And Fellowship Adiondam, Paxton Holt Daniel. I would now like to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Dr. John Marley, and the Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Dentistry, Dr. Edward Cotter, to introduce the candidates for the Fellowship of the Faculty of Dentistry, Membership of the Faculty of Dentistry, and Diploma in Primary Care Dentistry. I will now introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Dentistry. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration on page eight of your booklet in unison as follows. I, state your name, do hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and that I will, to the utmost of my power, to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Dean, in the presence of the President, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Dentistry of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Oral Surgery with Oral Medicine, Emer Mooney. <laughs> Ganesha Murthy Vinayahan. Adeyundum, Huda Abdullah Al Sayed Al Hashemi, Ghanam <laughs> Ali Al Menai. I will now introduce the candidates for membership of the Faculty of Dentistry. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page eight of your booklet in unison as follows. I, state your name, do hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Dean to admit the new members. By virtue of my office of Dean, in the presence of the President, I admit you members of the Faculty of Dentistry of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Now I will call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. Salma al Hassabi.
Mona Hussein. We now move on to the Diploma of Primary Care Dentistry of the Faculty of Dentistry. I will call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. Hania Anis. Carl Cassidy. Kumar Kara. Alison Ryan. Kira Sweeney. I would now like to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery. Dr. Theresa Frawley and the Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery, Dr. Patricia Minnock, to introduce the candidates for the Fellowship of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery, including by election, by examination, and adiondum. I will now introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page eight of your booklet in unison as follows. I, recite your name please, do hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Dean, in the presence of the President, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. By election, Howard Catton. <laughs> Brian Dolan. Charlotte McArdle. <laughs> Jane Salvage. Anna Stevens, Thank you very much. Thank you. 
By examination, Michelle Cullinan. Kathy Fitzgerald. <laughs> Shirley George. Mary Gobi. <laughs> Tanya King. Kathleen Kinsella. <laughs> Angela Lally. Cora Lunn. Sharon McCabe. Constance Elizabeth Mary McGilloway. <laughs> Daniel McTiernan. Stephen Pittman. <laughs> Tresia Potosri Devasi. Neve Rowan. <laughs> Eileen Shinners. Adiandam Mustafa Bodrick. <laughs> John Patrick Daly. Patricia Davidson. Darcy Gazer.
Catherine Hannaway. Helena Krauss. Jarlath McKenna. Sumter Ryan. We now move on to the Fellowship and Membership of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine. I would now like to invite Mr. Cliff Byrne, Dean of the Faculty of Sport and Exercise Medicine, to join with Professor Mary Horahan, and also invite Dr. Philip Carlin, Honorary Secretary, to introduce the candidates for the Fellowship of the Faculty of Sport and Exercise Medicine, RCPI and RCSI. I will now introduce the candidates for fellowship of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page 8 of your booklet in unison as follows. I, state your name, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said colleges. I now invite the Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Dean, in the presence of the President RCSI and President RCPI, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland and the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call the candidates to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. David Keohan. <laughs> Francisco Maya. Eamon Shahaik. <laughs> Willoughby Williamson. Philip Grieve. <laughs> Nicholas Lim. Simon Walsh.
I will now introduce the candidates for membership of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page 8 of your booklet in unison as follows. I state your name. Do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said colleges. I now invite the Dean to admit the new fellows. Members. By, by virtue of my office of Dean, in the presence of the President RCSI and President RCPI, I admit you, members of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland and the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call the candidates to come forward to receive your scroll from the Dean. Mohammed Fahad. <laughs> Connor Mitchell. Usman Nizar. It now gives me great pleasure to invite our newest honorary fellow, Dr. Valerie Roosh to come forward and deliver her guest lecture entitled Advances in Lung Cancer Care. President Mealy, President Horgan, deans, members of council, new fellows and guests, I would like to express my great appreciation for your according me this honorary fellowship. I was asked to make some brief comments on a scientific topic that reflects my interests, experience, and expertise. This is truly an extraordinary time to be involved in medicine. Thirty-some years ago, when I trained in cardiothoracic surgery, the scope of both scientific knowledge and surgical techniques that we had to learn was much more circumscribed than it is today. In adult cardiac surgery, coronary artery bypass grafting using only saphenous vein grafts and valve replacements, all performed via open approaches with median sternotomy, were the principal operations that we learned. Valve repair, cardiac transplantation, procedures for heart failure, and ablative operations for atrial fibrillation were performed only in a few centers of excellence. In pediatric cardiac surgery, palliative procedures for congenital heart defects and neonates were the norm, with definitive correction often deferred to later in childhood. In general thoracic surgery, which, as you've heard, is the focus of my career, we learned open approaches to lobectomy and pneumonectomy, esophagectomy, mediastinal tumors, and chest wall resection, as well as rigid endoscopy only and mediastinoscopy. Minimally invasive procedures such as videothoracoscopy, or so-called VATS, did not exist. Chemotherapy for thoracic malignancies was ineffective and highly toxic. Radiation was rarely curative, and multimodality treatment 
virtually non-existent. The past couple of decades have seen a dramatic evolution in our knowledge, fundamental understanding of disease biology, and medically related technologies. The treatment of lung cancer, which is part of my daily practice, is reflective of this evolution. Public smoking cessation and early lung cancer detection through CT scan screening have changed the types and tumor stages that we see in daily practice and have led to a renewed use of sublobar pulmonary resections. VATS and robotically assisted VATS are now standard for the resection of early stage lung cancers and have reduced operative morbidity and mortality, hospital length of stay, and have enabled us to consider surgical resection in older, more frail patients. In parallel, the development of stereotactic radiotherapy and of percutaneous ablative techniques now offer excellent treatment options for patients unable to tolerate resection of early stage lung cancers. Effective, well-tolerated multimodality therapy for locally advanced lung cancers is now standard. Rapid advances in genomic analyses have revolutionized the treatment of advanced, that is stages 3B and 4, lung cancer. Three principal types of therapy, namely cytotoxic chemotherapy, so-called targeted therapies which target specific driver mutations in lung cancers, and immunotherapy with drugs known as checkpoint inhibitors that target the CTLA-4 and PD-1 pathways, each selected on in, uh, based on individual tumor genomic profile have revolutionized treatment of advanced lung cancer. These approaches, which use a so-called personalized or precision medicine approach to lung cancer treatment, are yielding vastly improved overall survival and patient quality of life. They are now being incorporated into earlier stage resectable lung cancers via a large number of ongoing multicenter clinical trials. This revolution in our understanding of fundamental disease biology, along with rapid technological advances and paradigm-shifting changes in surgical techniques, completely alter our approaches to disease management, not only for lung cancer, but for many other diseases that we take care of as surgeons. Changes in how we practice are occurring at a dizzying pace. Medicine and surgery have become far more exciting and challenging than when I trained. Indeed, I envy those of you who have just recently completed training and qualified here for a fellowship. It is likely that your careers will encompass many wonderful and interesting improvements in patient care. However, for the foreseeable future, one of our challenges to, is to incorporate these exciting scientific advances into the care of all patients around the world. Virtually all of these recent advances from complex genomic analyses to new technologies for direct patient care are expensive and complex. At the present time, only the privileged few in developed countries have access to these myriad options. Even in the United States, where we have a highly resourced, but I might add also a highly dysfunctional healthcare delivery system, there are unconscionable disparities in care. As I have become recently acquainted with the RCSI and your leadership, I have been impressed with the extent to which you support other, less advantaged areas of the world in improving medical care and accessing many of these advances. 
in the years to come, addressing these global disparities will remain one of our most important challenges. Again, may I express my admiration for the excellent work being done both locally and globally by the RCSI, and may I extend my greatest appreciation for the honor of becoming a fellow here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Roosh. Uh, it's now my great pleasure to introduce our president, Mr. Kenneth Mealy, to address you. Thank you, Union Minister, President of RCPI, Vice President of RCSI, uh, Members of Council, Past Presidents, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Dean of the Faculty of Radiologists, Dean of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, Dean of the Faculty of Nursing and Midwifery, Academic Staff, and Faculty and Board Members, ladies and gentlemen. And especially our new RCSI Fellows and Members in Surgery, Radiology, Nursing and Midwifery, Dentistry, Sports and Exercise Medicine, and those awarded uh, diplomas in primary uh, dental care. And last but not least, our two new honorary fellows, Mr. Frank MacDonald and Dr. Valerie Roosh. As always, it is a pleasure to preside over conferring ceremonies such as this. And I welcome all of our new uh, members and fellows uh, and your families here today. This ceremony is a fitting recognition of the hard work and commitment that you have shown in your studies and your training and practice over the last number of years. All of the platform party and RCSI staff understand the mental and physical challenges required to be awarded an RCSI postgraduate diploma, membership or fellowship. Postgraduate rewards require hard work, focus and commitment, especially as all of you have managed full-time jobs while you've studied for these awards. Postgraduate certificates of the Royal College of Surgeons are prestigious, internationally recognised qualifications and quality standards. Having one of these qualifications demonstrates to colleagues, peers and employers a surgeon, a radiologist, a dentist or a nurse's knowledge, clinical skills and commitment to his or her practice. These qualifications also recognise your ability to use your intellectual knowledge and critical thinking in the clinical setting, skills which are vital for a successful professional career which lies ahead. We also hope that preparing for these exams and the education that you have received in RCSI will instill in you a sense of curiosity, not only about the health sciences in general, but also the world at large. And it is this which will not only enrich your life, but allow you to contribute to society in a more meaningful way. Today, we also acknowledge your families who have supported you during your years of training and practice. We understand those who have made sacrifices to support your career and rightly are proud of your achievements to date. Medicine, nursing and dentistry, however, face uh, many challenges and it is certain that all of you will work in increasingly complex healthcare environments where you will need to use all the skills that you have gained during your training. The ongoing explosion of new therapies and technologies within the health sciences arena will continue in your lifetime and will not only challenge you, but also give you an opportunity for intellectual stimulation that will demand constant re-evaluation of your knowledge and medical skills. However, despite all the exciting advances and opportunities that uh, the practice of health sciences offer, medical, nursing and dental practice has never been under greater challenge in most societies around the world. Medical costs have increased greater than economic expansion, particularly in the Western world, in a manner that most of us would consider unsustainable. This coupled with the greater patient and societal expectations of flawless care and the increasing complexity of many of the conditions that we treat has placed a spotlight on how we all practice. Increasingly, regulatory agencies around the world, coupled with the power of big data, has promoted greater scrutiny of outcomes and professional behaviour. And repeatedly, we see in all jurisdictions instances where doctors and nurses fail to understand these changes and fail to readjust their professional practice and behaviour accordingly. And an additional challenge for all of us in the health sciences is the erosion of truth and the promotion of, of so-called alternative facts 
touted to support various social and political agenda. And it's up to our professions to advocate true facts as we understand them to a skeptical public. So for instance, social policies supporting vaccination programs, rebuttal of medical treatments that lack a scientific or rational basis, and tackling global warning, warming can only be unequivocally addressed in this manner. And I'm sure our new Henri Frank uh, MacDonald uh, will understand when I say that I don't believe it alarmist to highlight the increasingly apparent profound effects that global warming will have on human health, particularly in low and middle income countries. So these are just some of the examples where we need clear leadership from medical communities around the world. It is also increasingly apparent that no healthcare system can fully support the healthcare needs of society. So it's important to be an advocate for not only each of our patients, but it's also important to understand the broader societal needs in the communities that we all work in and use the resources at our disposal carefully. Despite the challenges, however, uh, facing health sciences uh, throughout the world, uh, the basis of all patient care is empathy, which is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. And this must form the basis of all our practice, even when working in difficult circumstances. And it is this which makes the professions that we represent so rewarding and maintains the societal trust on the medical and nursing professions in most countries throughout the world. Today is also the time to acknowledge the commitment of the teachers and trainers who have taught you and supported you over the last number of years. It is their endeavours which have given you the skills to practice medicine, nursing and dentistry and which will allow you to make a significant contribution to the well-being of the communities in which you work. Today we graduate a total of 347 doctors, nurses and dentists, of whom 112 are present here today. RCSI is rightly proud of our mission statement, which refers to developing healthcare leaders who make a difference worldwide. This is our ambition for you. You will add to the growing body of RCSI fellows and members and alumni who practice in just under 100 countries around the globe. And we look forward to your contribution uh, to our other RCSI fellows and members who are making a difference worldwide and who we are so rightly proud of. So finally, again, let me congratulate our new RCSI fellows and members and diplomats and acknowledge the support of your families. I wish you every success in your personal and professional lives, and I'm confident that passing these milestones in your career will equip you well for the challenges you will encounter in your further training and future careers. So well done again. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes the formal proceedings for this evening, but we invite you uh, to join us for a reception in the boardroom and college hall with fellows, members, and diplomats. Mm -hmm.